friends welcome back to my channel and into my home in today's video we're going to be doing some spring cleaning now this isn't going to be your typical spring cleaning clean with me type video although i do love watching those but i decided to go in a different direction since my channel is about routines and zone cleaning then you know that each zone in our home is being deep cleaned every five to six weeks this almost eliminates the need for a deep clean during springtime However, there are some maintenance projects that I like to take care of either once or twice a year. Today, I will share six or seven of them with you. Plus, I have cleaning tips and I'll also do reviews on a few new products. Okay, let's do this. I was influenced by a few other YouTubers to buy this Bissell Steam Shot. I know I may be a little late to the game, but I'm not one to just buy something without a lot of research of that product. All the products that I show you will be linked in my description box. Now clicking on the link doesn't cost you anything, but it does help my channel when you purchase through my link. These three little brushes are the detail brushes. They're color coded so that you can use them in different areas of your home. This is their grout brush, but I use it for something different at the end of this video. This one is the flat scraping tool. And then we have the window squeegee. I also use this for something different. This one is a fabric steamer, and it comes with this terry cloth pad that you put over it. And here is the extension hose. It also comes with a little container to fill it, and it comes with a whopping 20 foot cord. The first thing I'm gonna use them on is here on my countertops. I'm gonna steam them to get them good and sanitized, and then we're gonna seal my granite. I'm going to use the window squeegee today, but I'm going to adapt it by rubber banding a microfiber cloth around it. I learned this from Catherine from Do It On A Dime. Today, I'm showing you snippets of what I'll be doing for my spring cleaning this year. I won't bore you with watching me do each task start to finish. That would make this video way too long. I will complete all these tasks over the next few days. Breaking down projects into bite-sized pieces helps me to not get overwhelmed. Look at the shine on that counter. I'm looking at it closer to see if there's any areas that need extra attention before I come in and put on a sealer. I already know that I have some hard water built up right here around the faucet. So I'm going to take a razor and gently scrape it off. It's very important that you hold your razor at an angle so that you don't accidentally scratch the granite permanently. I also take small little strokes when I'm doing this. This is the sealer that I chose to use for this counter. There are so many out there. I just had to do my research and find the best choice for me. Once I thoroughly shake the bottle, I'll pour some out onto the granite. Then I'll use my foam brush to work it around. The goal is to keep all the areas wet for five minutes. Then you take your microfiber cloth and wipe off any leftover product. There's not a lot of smell coming from this product, but I do have the large sliders opened up just in case. It's a good idea to reseal your countertops once a year. I usually do mine in the spring. Okay, once everything sits for about five minutes, you take a rag to wipe the extra product off. I'm using a microfiber cloth. Now I wouldn't suggest that you use your e-cloths to do this. The ones that I'm using right here are the kind that you get in a pack from TJ Maxx. I'm so glad I got the island done. This week I'll clear off the other countertops and I'll do the same thing to them. Now we're going to go ahead and head on over and do the second task that I have for the day. I love my dark cabinets, however they show all kinds of dings. So today I'm going to be using this stain pen marker to touch up little spots. Right here is caused from the grate of the stovetop that sometimes scrapes the corner of this cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and touch this up. After you take it out of the package, you prime the marker, then wipe it on and wipe it off. 
I'm working really quick because some of the areas will, will absorb quicker. You can always add more to build up the color. Here on the side of this cabinet is where we used to keep our trash can before my husband and I installed it underneath one of the cabinets. The flip top of the trash can used to scrape up against the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then I'm going to touch up this wood as well. And remember the guest bathroom that we redid underneath the cabinets? I told you that pulling out the wicker basket was scraping my cabinets. I'm going to go ahead and go under there and touch up that as well. Okay, we're going to head on over to the task three and I'm going to show you how I clean my baseboards. The first step is to dust them regularly so that you don't get to the point where you're having to deep clean them all the time. I do this one of three ways. You can choose which one works best for you. Right here I'm using an attachment to my DACA pole. It's microfiber, removable, and can be washed. I just hold it next to me and swipe as I go. And the next option is to use the Swiffer Duster on an extension rod. Once you're done with this one, you just throw the little pad away. So, but I'm healing with time. And the third option is to go ahead and use the extension on your vacuum. Either of these ways work great, but dusting has to be done often or you'll get a buildup of dust. If this happens, you'll need to get a damp microfiber cloth, and for really stubborn spots, you can use a magic eraser. Be very careful with the magic eraser. Only use it in small areas and use a light touch because it can take the sheen off of your paint. The baseboards in the bathroom and the kitchens, they especially get built up because of the grease from cooking and the steam in the bathroom turns the dust into muck. This shot is next to the area of my kitchen that the trash can was at. I'm going to have to follow all the steps to get this mess cleaned up. All right, now we're back into my hallways and we're going to be working on cleaning the tracks in my windows and we'll be using the Bissell Steam Shot. In the past, I would sprinkle the track with baking soda and then add a little vinegar to foam it all up and then I would wipe everything out. It was kind of a mess because the baking soda would leave this chalky residue. I hear that the Steam Shot is awesome for this. I'm going to start by vacuuming it out, but I found that it really doesn't accomplish much and probably isn't necessary unless you really have a lot of flies or, or loose debris in there. I decided to use a concentrator attachment so that I can get into the corners that I usually have to use Q-tips to clean. You see how the water's coming out? I ended up finding out that it does that if you overfill it. It does come with a measured water cup. However, when I filled the steamer, it wasn't completely empty. So I added more water on top of the water that was already left in there. So next time, I'll be sure to pour out any water that's in there before I add more in. Now I'm going to use the concentrator to get here into the corners. This is usually where I have to use a Q-tip to get all that cleaned out. It did a great job in a fraction of the time that it took me with the baking soda. I'm going to go ahead and quickly do these other two windows since I'm here, but I have to do the rest of the house sometime next week. Our next task is to touch up paint. I bought these little paint containers on Amazon to hold my indoor and outdoor paint that I use for touch up painting. The builder put all of our paints into this box. However, as you can see, none of it is labeled with my paint colors, so I'll need to go back into the paperwork to find out that information. 
I'm going to label this indoor paint because it's the only color that I have inside my house. Instead of the foam brush that came with the containers, I like to use a little chip brush so that I can feather out the paint. A little word of warning when it comes to house paint. If you had your house professionally painted, oftentimes they'll, they'll use a sprayer. And when they do that, they add a little bit of water or solvent to thin down the paint. So when you go to touch up the spots, you may have a slightly different color paint or sheen. I only use the paint to touch up the mark and then I lightly feather it out. The top seals tightly and I just leave it up in my pantry for when I need it next. Have you seen this gadget before? This is a carpet rake. I've been very curious how well these things really work. I researched them and I wanted to be sure to get one that was more heavy duty than the ones that I was seeing online. I like this one because of how it's attached to the pole. There are two stress points that are far apart making it more durable. It is also the one that professional carpet cleaning companies use. My home is only two years old. However, I'm already seeing some matting of my carpet in the high traffic areas. This rake will help lift that matting out. You rake the carpet in different directions to lift the fiber. It also loosens up pet fur if you have an issue with that. Afterwards, you just give the carpet a good vacuum. My daughters already have dibs on who gets to use this next in their home. Here's my empty vacuum. Let's see how much fur we can get up. Now I sped up these clips, but actually I'm doing a very slow vacuum to get all the fur that the rake brought up. I'm also vacuuming in different directions like I did when I was raking. Alright, so here's the canister full of fur. I knew that it would probably do this because we do have a dog and she sheds a lot. In this task, I'm going to show you how I wash my curtains without taking them down. The first thing that I do is shake them out to remove some of the dust. You can also run over them with a handheld vacuum. And then I get a bucket and I add a half a teaspoon of original powder tied with hot water. But it needs to be comfortably hot where you can put your hand into it. Then I use this microfiber mitt. They're sold in car aisles at the box stores like Target or Walmart. I bought mine off of Amazon. I'll link it down with the other products. After I wring the mitt out very well, then I run it over the front and the back of the curtains. This will freshen it up and remove any dirt that might be in the curtain. Now you'll have to be wise to your curtains and whether they can handle a little dampness or not. These ones are okay. I'll also be doing the ones in the living room. You can see I have a spot here in the living room curtain that oftentimes gets stuck in the slider. All you have to do is rub it with the mitt and most of the spots will come out. You should rinse your mitt often and change the water as needed. This week I'll have my husband bring in a tall ladder so that we can get to the top parts of these curtains. I also need to dust the rods. Okay, so this is the nastiest job by far, but it's going to be a satisfying clean. We're going to be working on the track of my large sliders. There's so much dog hair and debris wedged into the track. I want to find the right combination to get this track nice and clean again. I do use a small blower to blow out the tracks every month or so but I feel like it needs even more. So we're gonna try the Bissell Steam Shot. I've got a soul. 
I'm vacuuming out as much debris as I can, but again, it's difficult to get deep down into those grooves with this vacuum. I started with the concentrator attachment, thinking it would be best to push the debris, but I found that the grout attachment actually worked way better. The bristles moved the hair, grass, and rocks, and the steam loosened up the dirt and mud. However, I need something to pull it out, so I'm going to try the knife and cloth method. I'll link this inventive product down in the description box. I'm just kidding. As you'll see in the next few slides, it worked like a charm. After I get these all cleaned out, then I'm going to be re-lubricating the tracks with a dry lube. I tried to find some so that I can show you here on the video, but they are all back ordered on Amazon and in the stores. This is a big job and it's going to take the rest of the afternoon to complete it. So I'll continue working on these tracks off camera. I hope that you've gotten good ideas for your spring cleaning. If you enjoy this video, would you please give me a big thumbs up? It's the only way that YouTube will push my videos. And don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get reminded every time I post a new video. I'm going to link above last year's outdoor spring cleaning video that I do at the end of the spring to prepare for the summer outdoors. It is full of cleaning motivation. I'll also link it at the end of this video. I will see you again this Sunday for week 14 of our six month declutter and organize challenge. If you've missed any of those videos, I'll add the playlist at the end of this video. Before you go, I hope that you'll leave me a comment below. Stay blessed my friends.